my name is Shristi and welcome to day 22 of the 30 day mean stack Honolulu challenge. So today we're going to continue looking at our update customer views and, and modals. And um, what we're going to look at is specifically the, um, the buttons and we're going to get the buttons to actually perform some kind of function. So for example, um, when we hit a button, we want a customer record to actually be updated. And by updated, I mean, we actually want to send data back to our MongoDB and we want it to save the data that we send it so that next time we come back to the page, um, we want that data to be available to us. What we also want to do is when we update the customer, we want it to close the modal window, right? So um, if you've got it open, you've been editing away, when you hit update and close, two things need to happen at the same time. The customer details need to be updated and the modal needs to close. And uh, conversely, when we hit the cancel button, uh, no details um, that have been changed should be updated, um, but at the same time, we want the modal to be closed. So those are the types of things that we're going to look at today. So to do that, we'll just go across to uh, Angular UI, so UI Bootstrap, and um, and just go down to our directive. So go to modal, um, and if we go down to the code, go to JavaScript, um, we'll see at the bottom of this page, there's a couple things here. Um, one of them is this function for modal instance close. So it talks about actually um, closing a modal window. And the second one has an instance of dismiss or for canceling a modal window. So these are two functions um, that we're going to want to use. So we can, um, we can copy these um, and we'll copy them um, across to our controller. Right, so we just go across, we go to customers, client controllers. So again, we're in our app, we're down public, we're in modules, customers, controllers, so customers, client controller. Um, and we'll just go into the controller instance um, that forms part of our modal. So just this area here um, and give yourself a bit of space and just paste in um, those details there. And there's only one change that we're going to make to these details. And that is um, this kind of item here. It talks about scope.selected.item. And, um, and what we're going to do is just change that to scope.customer, um, just to refer to the, the scope that we're currently working in. Okay, that's good. So that gives us some functions for um, OK and cancel. So when we're uh, wanting to close our, um, our modal windows. Um, but what about when we actually want to update the details? Um, and uh, and send that data back to um, to MongoDB. Well, for that we need to um, put put some code into our controller. So if you um, if you if you go across to the edit customer client view, you see at the top we've got um, customers update controller. When we want to update the details for our customer, we want to refer to this particular controller because we want to use this for our customer related details. But when we're um, just working within the modal, we're referring to the data in that modal as just customer. And, there, and there's a couple of, of reasons for that. Um, one is that for this customer reference, this customer scope is actually referring to the scope that's living in the modal, not the, the scope that's actually um, part of the particular um, controller. So this, if I, if I try and explain that slightly differently, there's kind of two controllers at play on this view, right? One is this customer's update controller, and the other one is um, the modal instance or the modal itself, um, and that has its own controller. And we're using that to handle our customer details because when we initiate the modal, we're passing our customer details through to it, if that kind of hopefully makes sense. Um, so what that means is when we want to close our modal window, we don't need to refer to this customer up controller because we're not using that controller. We're using the modal controller to do that. Hopefully that sort of makes sense um, in the in the next bit when we when we go in and we actually add um, add in our button. So if I jump back to the wireframes. We see we've got two buttons, one we want to be green and one we want to be sort of orange. Um, at the moment, we've got primary um, and warning. So primary is blue. We'll change that to success 
to give that a bit of a green color um, and we've got warning which is orange so that's that's fine so cancel fine we'll call that cancel but for the, for the green button um, whoops we want that to be called update and close so not uh, change it from okay change it to update and close okay so if we look at what we've got um, down below here We've got um, an input type of submit, um, a value of update, and so on and so forth, and all this other sort of stuff. And that works fine if we're um, if we're using it in conjunction with this ng um, submit uh, directive um, that Angular provides for for update. But um, we're gonna we're gonna do this um, a little bit differently. So I'm just gonna pull out um, these these two items here. Uh, well, actually, we'll pull out all of that so because uh, we don't actually have any formatting for the class. So that can all kind of go. We'll leave form. Um, and at the bottom here, we're going to um, address these buttons in a slightly different way. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to keep our ng click for OK because now that will refer to the, um, the OK function that we added into the controller, which is this one here. Um, and then we've, if we go back to edit, we've got an ng click for cancel, which will refer to um, this particular function here. But if we, if we want an update function to actually update the details of our customer, well, we then need to go and add that into our customer's update control. So let's go down and find our update um, function. And that was, um, whoops, where's that? That one's this one here. So we'll just copy that. So copy that and we'll just take that and put that inside the customer's update controller here and just remove the comments and then we should have something that um, that looks something like this okay so but there's a couple of changes that we want to make to this as we um, as we have done for our other controller we're going to remove scope and um, we're just going to go with um, oops, remove scope and we'll just change that to this. So, so this dot update um, and we're going to pass through some details that we actually wanted to update. So we're going to pass through the customer details that are living within the scope of the modal use this controller to update that back to MongoDB. So we'll go with, um, uh, let's say, customer. So we want to pass through back our customer details. Um, we've got um, var customer equals scope customer. Well, it doesn't need to be scope of customer. It just needs to inc it just needs to refer to the customer that we're passing back. So, so what I might do is just change this to updated customer, so that um, we know who we're referring to. So that's the customer details that we're passing back. And then when we pass those details back, we're going to um, assign that um, to a variable called customer. And then we're going to perform a customer update. And when we do that, we, we don't want to change the location path. So we don't want it to go um, to take the user anywhere else. So that can, um, that can go. Um, and we'll just keep the, um, the error response. It's fine. We can, we can work with them um, with either way. All right. So that, that now gives us um, a, a function to call where we want to perform an update for our customer's details, right? But we need to um, we need to include this back in the code. So we need to call this update function from our uh, edit customers view. So if we jump back to the edit customer view, we want to use this ng click, and I'm going to show you a, a sort of a shortcut um, for um, for putting in or throwing in two functions from the same ng click. Um, now, some people may say this is not the best practice to use, but it works. Um, and because as long as we don't have any errors. So uh, what we're going to do is we want to refer to this function, right, for um, for update. So this update, but we want to refer to it in context of customer's update controller, because if we try to refer to it outside of context, it wouldn't work. And the reason for that is because the app would assume we're trying to call a function um, within the controller for the modal. So remember, we've got two mod two controllers that we're working with here. So edit customer controller. What I'm going to plug in here is I go to the top and just grab that reference to cus 
Demur Up Controller. Just a very weird kind of reference, but that'll do. Um, we'll go down to NG Click for Update and Close and just paste that in. So Customer Update Control. And next to that, just put, give yourself some space. So put in a dot and then put in Update, which is a reference to the function. And then when we pass the details to that function, the details we want to pass through are the details of um, this this model, this scope here, the customer scope, which we're referring to for the NG model. So we'll go customer, which is the, the model that we're trying to pass. And just to split up both of these functions, we'll just throw in um, a semicolon in the middle there. So that now lets us use one button to call um, two functions. Um, now, we can just pull out, remove these two buttons at the bottom. We don't need those for anything now. Um, and again, just like everything else, you can style these buttons um, any way you like. If you want to make them um, you know, really big, you can you can throw in like a, um, a button large or something like that just to, um, just to give it a bit of a bigger sort of, sort of size. Um, okay, so moment of truth. Let's test this out. So we're going to save. We go across to our app and just go to customers, list customers, just make that bigger. Just letting that refresh. Okay, so here's our customers. So what I want to do is I want to change uh, Mary's name to Jane. Okay, so I click on Mary. Here's Mary's details. Um, and I'm going to take Mary and change that to Jane and I'm going to click on update and close so the modal has closed Jane the name is now updated on the view but the real truth will be if I refresh this page what will the name be so let's just refresh the page and let's see what details come back from MongoDB have the details actually been saved so waiting for the details to come back and you can see that now we've actually got um, Jane being returned back from MongoDB. So we have actually saved our, um, our customers' details. Now, if you weren't sure whether that, that process has actually happened or not, you can just um, look in your console logs as well. So if we inspect element um, and just go across to console, um, let's have another look at that process. So if I click on Jane, you can see what it's doing is doing get, so it's going and finding that particular view that we want to display as the modal. Um, let's change Jane um, back to Mary. Make that bit smaller. Click on update. And what it's what it's also doing here is it's doing a put, um, which means that it's actually sending the data um, from the client, so from my computer, um, and sending that. To the um, to the server um, to to allow MongoDB to actually save those details. Um, so again, if we now refresh the page, um, our customer's name should remain as Mary. And there you go. All right, so that's where we're going to leave it for today. Um, we've come quite a long way in terms of using modals for updating our customer details. Um, we are going to have a look. Um, from, from tomorrow for the next few days, we're going to have a look um, at updating, or sorry, at creating customer records. That process is a little bit more tricky. There's a couple more things involved. Um, but now that you've kind of got a bit of a hang of how modals work, um, hopefully it won't be too confusing um, at this point. Um, thanks for joining me. Please um, subscribe to the channel. Check out bossable.com for more details. Let me know what you think of what you've done so far, um, and I'll see you tomorrow.